Good afternoon, my name is Dr. John Littell. I'm a family physician. Some of you may have seen a previous YouTube that just came out last week, a video I made primarily for my patients, but many others I hope across the nation who are concerned about how this COVID-19 pandemic has affected your lives, not only from the point of view of the fear that you might get this disease, or perhaps even you know folks who've been exposed to it, but the consequences for our nation economically, uh, socially, psychologically, spiritually. And I spent a lot of time dealing with those issues during the last video. However, afterwards, several folks who had seen that and seen me in my office daily came up with some of the same questions and said, Dr. Littell, can you please just give us a, a short and sweet version that we can share with our friends that place basically says what I'm appealing today to you to do, which is, as I'm entitling this presentation, take the masks off. Specifically, I'm calling this take the mask off of COVID-19. It's about time that Americans in general learn the facts about why they are wearing these masks, and in many cases, even gloves, and in fact, doing the social distancing. I was very concerned again yesterday when for the first time in several weeks, due primarily to my very busy schedule in solo family medicine, I actually ventured out into the world of Sam's Club and Target to run some errands for my family. And it was while I was lined up in front of Sam's Club that I first began to realize, oh my goodness, I have to get this message out. The folks in front of me were lined up waiting for their carts and every single one of them had masks on. Every single one of them was practicing the social distancing and several had gloves on. But the most disturbing image of all for me was the young mother with three small children, including one little baby in a carriage, who all of whom had masks on. Imagine a four month old baby with a mask on and two other little girls, three and five, age, three and five years of age and the mother herself, of course. After we got into the uh, store, I couldn't help but stop and, and visit with this woman I said, ma'am, I'm a family doctor. I take care of patients with COVID-19. I take care of many children. And I'd like to let you know that in reality, you don't need to be wearing those masks and certainly your children don't as well. She could have had a different reaction. I was actually frankly surprised when she said to me, you're a doctor? I said, yeah. She says, I have a lot of questions for you then. She said, please tell me it's not true. I just saw on the television yesterday that there's a new strain of COVID-19 that's gonna kill children. And that's why my children have masks on them. And, and she went on to ask more questions and I, I started to explain to her much of which you heard hopefully in my previous video, some of which I'll say to you today, which is simply that none of this is based on facts. No, there is not a new strain of COVID-19 infecting children. As a matter of fact, if you do the research on that, it's another virus that in fact did get some children sick. And guess what, and sadly so, Children do get many, many viruses. I've taken care of children with measles, mumps, malaria, chicken pox, a lot in 30 years. So this woman's concern about her children is legitimate, but is it based on any facts about how COVID-19 has mutated and now is going to attack her children? No. You know, what really gets my goat these days is, is that not just myself, you know, I'm, I'm trying to implore to folks there are a lot of doctors out there saying the same thing to their patients. Please take your masks off unless you're actually someone who's infected and in danger of spreading your infection to others. You know, that is the purpose for the mask. That is the purpose. So let's, let's take a look at one famous individual today, perhaps the most famous individual in the world with regards to COVID-19 and see whether he has decided to wear a mask and what his reasons are. So let's look at this photo here. This is from a news conference just on Friday, today's Sunday. You see President Trump at the microphone with no mask on, and in the background you see Dr. Anthony Fauci with not just a mask and not an MP4945, uh, excuse me, but a full mask going right down to his chin. When President Trump was asked by one of the reporters, Sir, why are you not wearing a mask? His response was, for the most part, appropriate. He said, I'm out here in the sunshine and the fresh air. I'm not near anybody who has COVID-19, and I, for myself, know I don't have COVID-19. 
therefore I'm not wearing a mask. Now, had they asked Mr. Fauci, why, Mr. Fauci, are you wearing a mask? He would have said, <laughs> and someone probably would have said, Mr. Fauci, could you take the mask off and really tell us why you're wearing that mask? And his answer, had he been candid with America, would have been, well, I'm wearing the mask to make a political statement, not a medical statement. I'm wearing the mask so that everybody out there realizes there's just no safe place to be in America without a mask and without social distancing. Because his ultimate message, as many of you have heard, is that this thing's gonna come back and kill a lot more people in the fall, and unless you get a vaccine, many of you will die. Now, I'm not gonna get into the connections that Dr. Fauci has with the vaccine manufacturers. I'll leave that up to the rest of you to go online. This is not a conspiracy theorist that you're looking at. I'm just a doctor who takes care of patients, and I, for one, am proud in this instance of our president for standing tall and saying, I don't need a mask. And even if he had not been tested, as most of you have not been tested, to see if you have the antibodies, he still is doing the right thing medically to not wear a mask, because in reality, you cannot get this disease, COVID-19, standing out in the fresh air and the sunshine. The reality is you have to have sustained contact, 10 to 15 minutes, 30 minutes, as I said in my previous video, face to face with somebody who is infected. And the incubation period and the degree of infectivity of someone with COVID-19 does not last longer than three weeks. We know this for a fact. So all these people that are around you in your communities who have not been exposed to it for the last three or four weeks or longer have no earthly chance of having COVID-19. So what am I imploring to you today to do is to go up to folks in your community, in your churches, in your stores, wherever you shop, wherever you live, and say the masks do not need to be on. All right, this is a respiratory droplet that has to be projected from the nose or the mouth of the infected individual into your face. All right, and as I said in the last video, even the gloves are not necessary. I mean, to actually think you can touch something and get it into your respiratory tract is a far-fetched idea, number one, that has not been proven clinically, and number two, the idea that there are things around you, like the, the grocery carts that, are, have, that have COVID-19 on them in communities where we've seen no active COVID-19. Well, that's ludicrous. Now, I got one other point to make, because many, many people are saying, well, Dr. Littell, we now have one and a half million cases, and there's increasing number of cases. Well, let me tell you a second about what a case of COVID-19 really means. And this is gonna really, really blow your mind to use an old expression. In training in medicine, if somebody has a case of measles or mumps or rubella or influenza, the case definition, according to the CDC and the World Health Organization, the case definition is the presence of clinical symptoms first and foremost. So I'm not gonna think about a person having measles, chicken pox, influenza, malaria, Clostridium difficile, any infection, and that's usually what we're talking about with case definitions, I don't even go there unless the patient presents with the clinical symptoms of that disease. However, with COVID-19, the Centers for Disease Control and all the other organizations around the world came up with an interim case definition, right here, interim case definition approved April 5th, 2020. By the way, let me get rid of this mask. I'm asking the rest of you to do the same. Interim case definition. Now, when you look at this, this should be upsetting to Americans because what they did with this interim de definition is they said, okay, you should have ideally the clinical criteria of this disease, at least two of the following symptoms, fever, chills, rigors, which is shakes, myalgia, which is muscle pain, et cetera, et cetera, headache, sore throat, smell sensation. But the additional criteria is also a laboratory diagnosis. They said one or the other, not both. So you can have laboratory evidence that shows that you're acutely infected or that you have it in the past, which is another incredible difference from previous. In other words, the antibody tests that are all out and about that measure your acute and long-term immunity are being counted as criteria for a case of COVID-19 as long as you have what's called epidemiologic linkage. 
which is close contact with a person who could have or might have had it, um, or travel to an area, or member of a risk cohort. All of these are nebulous terms, which simply means that the Centers for Disease Control can say that anybody with a positive test has a case of COVID-19. Therefore, you're all seeing these numbers going up and up and up. In fact, most of these folks, probably 90%, have never even been sick. Their immune systems, if they've been exposed, have handled it. We've never done this, in my recollection, with any other disease, yet we're doing it with COVID-19. So please, ignore the cases. In many cases, you need to even look at the deaths because for the same reason, the probable deaths from COVID-19 have not required even a laboratory diagnosis of COVID-19, which is even another amazing statistic. All right, you've all heard this. Many of you should have heard this. So my, in closing, this is more than 10 minutes I just found out, but in closing, I'd, leave, I'd appeal to you all, do not look at the television news medical experts for guidance on how to live your lives. If we do that, then you have surrendered your freedoms to live a life in which you can pursue your dreams, your happiness. There has been no clinical, no medical evidence that we ever needed to suspend our normal operations in schools, in sporting events, in churches. There's been no evidence. As a matter of fact, I could have gone on, but if you look at Italy, you look at China, where did this disease spread? It, spread, it spread either in the households of people who were already infected, where they lived with these people, or in the hospitals and the nursing homes where infected people came and it spread like wildfire. And the doctors in Italy appealed to us in America not to do what they did in Italy. If they had mild cases, stay home, don't go to the emergency room, call your family doctor and get good advice. All right, so what I'm asking you all, do not listen to the television. Find folks who will tell you the truth about COVID-19 cases and about the need to finally, please take off the masks and the gloves if you're out and about in the normal community situations that we, in which we all live our lives. For those of us who work in hospitals and doctor's offices, we do judiciously wear them. But again, I don't wear them with every patient. A mask, I don't need to. I know my patients, I know who's infected, they know I'm not. Please take the mask off of COVID-19. Thank you very much, God bless you, and have a beautiful day.